Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA Physics class. I'm going to do a couple of practice problems to you, or for you today. Um, for two-dimensional motion, we're looking at objects launched, or projectiles launched horizontally. So we'll just work through a couple of practice problems from your book, and hopefully that will help you to better understand this part of the unit. I'm going to go ahead and... Not flip me upside down, hopefully. Then I'm going to actually show you my notebook here. And I'm going to make this larger so you can see it better. Now we're going to flip it upside down and give you a better view of my notebook here. This is such advanced technology. So we're looking at page 99 in your textbook, problem number one in practice set D. So one. D, page 99. <clears throat> and this says a baseball rolls off of a 0.7 meter high desk. So this is a, a 70 centimeter high or 0 0.70 meter high desk. And it strikes the floor about 0.25 meters away, so we're going to mark that at about roughly here, 0.25 meters away. Oops. Okay, and it says how fast was the ball rolling when it hits this point? And you got to remember a couple of things here. You have to remember that <clears throat> when an object is has some horizontal velocity and it hits the edge of this table and it starts to fall that although its velocity will increase in the y direction its velocity in the x direction is the same here as it was here it doesn't change because it does not have any force acting on it in the x direction so according to um, the laws of physics that that Velocity in the x direction is the same at either point. So if we can just find the final x velocity, we are in good shape. If you look at page 97 in your textbook, that's going to show you a set of kinematic equations that are useful for um, objects, projectiles that fall from rest. Okay, so here we have in the y direction. The final velocity in the y direction is equal to the acceleration in the y direction times delta t. Or we have the square of the final velocity in the y direction is equal to 2 times the acceleration times delta y, the change in the distance that it falls. Or we have the change in the distance that it falls delta y is equal to 1 half of the acceleration times a square of the time. So remember that these are all derived from our um, initial equations on velocity and acceleration that we we had kind of way back on page I don't remember is 82 or something like that and they kind of showed you um, they kind of walked you through how let's see it wasn't 82 walked you through how to get to that set so from there uh, it's a little bit further back than that <clears throat> now, because in this case our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity, then when you go through these equations and everywhere you have, um, you know, a change in velocity, you can just kind of they're they're equal, they're constant, so that we know that we only that means there's no acceleration, right? That means that none of these with A would have no acceleration. So we're going to stick with just um, this equation, delta x equals vx delta t. vx delta t. Change in velocity. Um, the, the change in distance is the velocity times the time. It's just a reorder of your velocity equation because velocity is usually distance divided by time so we're just saying distance 
is equal to velocity times time, right? It's just a reorder of that particular equation. All right, so that being said, we're going to be doing this problem. Baseball rolls off a 0 0.7 meter high desk and strikes the floor at 0.25 meters away from the base of the desk. How fast was the ball rolling? So we have some information. What we have here is we have delta y and we have delta x. Delta y, change in distance from here to here, is 0 0.70 meters. You can call that almost, you can say minus 0 0.7 because we're falling down. And our delta x is 0.25 meters. So those are the two knowns that we have. What we need is we need to find ourselves some um, velocity vectors. We need to find the x component of velocity, the y component of a velo the velocity, because um, that's what we're looking for right there is that, that x component of the velocity. But, but in order to do that, we have to derive some, some um, vectors here. We actually have to be able to figure out the vectors for the velocity. What we know is we know that um, the final velocity in the y direction squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration in the y direction times delta t delta y. This is the only one of those three kinematics that doesn't have time, because in other words, we don't have time as a given here, okay? So we'll substitute our numbers in here. Remember that the acceleration in the x direction is always equal to negative 2.81 meters per second squared, and delta y is negative 0 0.70 meters. When we multiply these using our calculator, Okay, times 2. So this gives me V um, sub Y squared final is equal to 13.734. Square root of both sides. And that tells me that the final velocity in the Y direction is 3.7 meters per second. Now that's great. That gives me this 3.7 meters per second. But remember that I really wanted to have the velocity in the x direction. Problem being is that I don't know time. The reason why I solved for this guy is because now I can use one of the other equations to solve for time. And the first equation that's given to me <coughs> is v sub y f is equal to a sub y delta t. Well, I know that z sub, v sub y f is the 3.7 meters per second. And I know a sub y is always at 9.8 meters per second squared. And if I use this as my delta t, Remember, time is a scalar quantity, even though this is actually negative 9.81 here. It really won't matter. Directionality won't matter here because time is a scalar quantity. So, so we're going to take that 3.7 and we're going to divide it by the negative 9.81. And that gives us 0.38 seconds for time. Okay, 0.38 seconds. So now I can use my horizontal motion of a projectile kinematic, which is delta x equals v sub x delta t. I can reorder this to solve for v sub x, v sub x is equal to delta x, which we said was 0.25 meters. 
divided by 0.38 seconds. 0.25 divided by 0.38 gives us a speed, or excuse me, and a, um, a velocity of 0.66 meters per second in the x direction. So, so that's because it is telling us that it's actually the horizontal velocity. That's why its direction is given. That's why we know it's a velocity and not a speed. So that's the extent of this problem here. It's just able to solve for velocity in the x direction only. We also solve for velocity in the y direction. <laughs> All right, so um, there you go, one example problem on projectiles launched horizontally.